Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yuskia, I'm an architect. Together with my colleague Anwar, we're going to introduce you the idea of Sustainable Building Passport, a new way to capture and regulate carbon use in a building or building design. From our personal experience, for almost 10 years of practice in building industry, there is not many information or way to measure carbon use within the building that can help designer to design a good sustainable building. Most of the time, sustainability ends up just as a gimmick. As we all know, building emission contributes around 39% of global CO2 emission. 28% of it comes from embodied carbon, while the rest come from building operations. So with the right material selection, there is a big opportunity to reduce emission and create healthier building. This is Atlas building in the Netherlands. It was built back in 1967. Two years ago, it was remodeled with new material selection and the result 80% carbon emission reduction, 50% less heating energy, 73% less cooling energy and 400,000 USD annual saving. It means someone will be happy because they don't have to pay for it. The thing is not many people know about embodied carbon. Actually, just by selecting right material, we can already cut down up to 25% of building emission. In the long run, right material selection can improve the building performance so we can reduce the energy use up to 50%. At the moment, there are already some tool to calculate carbon use within the building, but most of them limited on academic field. The only public tool that we know, EC3 tool, doesn't have comprehensive function and information. It's just too simple and too general. What's the challenge here? At the moment, there is no comprehensive access to carbon data, and a lot of people think that low emission building is just about energy efficiency. But a lot of people don't know about embodied carbon and no carbon energy potential simulation tool. There is also no report on future saving potential. It leads to poor material selection from the designer and also the investor cannot see added value of the sustainability. So they always think profit is more important than sustainability. From the tenant or end user, because they cannot see future saving potential, they always think the cheaper the rent, the better. It all lead to less low emission buildings. So we bring building passport to, the, to bridge the gap. It all starts with building design or existing building. All of the materials are inventorized and then the, the tool or the software will simulate and create report about emission, building health, energy performance, and potential saving. The report will be used to review and revise the design until the optimal number is reached before applied to the construction. But the benefit doesn't stop only until here. The passport will be updated based on actual condition and it will be kept for further use, like a building identity, defining market value, energy performance report, economy performance report, recycle or retrofit potential, possible tool for green building assessment, possible reference for building permit. The building, perm the building passport, the software will be our goal, but our very first step will be the manual version of the passport. We're going to make a demonstration to convince the other stakeholders that it works. To be able to achieve our first step, we need some help. First one, we're going to need help from building owners. We're going to ask for buildings for our pilot projects. What we can offer is comprehensive report on the building potential. We're going also need some help from research institute such as LIPI or other institute we need access to carbon and emission data. What we can offer is feedback data for further researches. This is the outcome of year one. In the first year, we are going to develop the beta software. This is how we imagine 
the software will look like. By year three, we are going to do some pilot projects, evaluation and refinement of the tool. We expect by the time we already reduce around 11 kiloton CO2 emission. Our target is by year five, there will be 250 new low emission buildings using this tool. It means we can potentially save 2.85 megaton CO2 emission. And in the end of year 10, there will be 750 new emission buildings plus 200 building transformations using this passport. And we can save up to 13.8 megaton CO2 emission. This is our team. My name is Hiskia. I'm an architect. I'm certified in building design and technology. My colleague is Anwar, he's an urban designer, and both of us graduated from the Eindhoven in the Netherlands, one of the few countries that is concerned in a sustainable built environment. We have also almost 10 years of working experience in building industry, so we are the right person to do this. This is our dream. By 2030, we're going to expand the use of a sustainable building passport for circular economy. As we all know, there are a lot of buildings that has low occupancy rate, especially commercial buildings. And uh, this pandemic also forced new lifestyle to us. So we believe in the future, there will be more and more vacant spaces. So we are going to use the passport to transform these vacant buildings and integrate local waste as material and create new low emission buildings with new purposes. We have big dream to change our built environment, but we realize that we cannot do it all alone. So we see this pitch as a big opportunity to convey our message and ask for help. It is your turn now. Are you going to join us to make a change? Thank you.